Hello. Well, uh, today I want to talk about a horror-themed um, Christmas film. Probably the best-known movie, um, Black Christmas. Now, um, this film uh, has, a, uh, has a cult following. Um, it's directed by Bob Clark, who I mentioned earlier this month uh, with A Christmas Story. And it stars Kira Dula. Dilula, whatever his, last, his name is, I have no clue how to pronounce it. Uh, I have before, but I've forgotten since. It was in 2001 A Space Odyssey, if you ever saw that. Uh, I played Dave, Olivia Hussey, Marion Kidder, Andrea Martin, Jog Saxon. And the film inspired Halloween, in case you didn't know. Um, but John Carpenter saw this film, loved it, and um, talked to the director and... Uh, Kind of what the director kind of said of what, how he would like to have the sequel be done. He sort of did that for Halloween, but took it in a different direction. Anyway. Uh, the, the plot is a uh, killer. Goes into a sorority house. Goes up into the attic and uh, during a Christmas party. And um, makes obscene phone calls uh, from a phone in the attic and uh, just uh, says horrible things, terrible things that back in 1974 were pretty like uh, kind of like a no-no sort of uh, but uh, yeah uh, the uh, <clears throat> the uh, really for um they, the people who made this movie were really did something really different than just the normal kind of trope. Um, for instance, the topic of abortion is um, talked about. You know, Lily Hussey's character and Kier's character are dating, and you know she gets pregnant, and um, she doesn't want the baby because she wants to do all these things in her life. Doesn't want to drop everything for a child, and he wants to talk about it. He's like he believes he has a uh, you know, right uh, to talk about this because, you know, he had a hand in uh, create the creation of this child inside of her. And uh, it's quite interesting. You, know, you don't really hear that kind of stuff in uh, horror movies, you know, mainly because people are getting killed. And um, that's a huge uh, topic that people, you know, really... And that depending on who you are, um, you know, you, you know, you have one view or another, and it's quite interesting to, to have that topic in this film. And really, um, you know, to take a plot of a guy who, uh, as the movie goes on, you hear the phone calls and you listen, you hear stuff like Billy and um, Agnes and this and that, uh, it becomes apparent as to what what the, what this guy's deal is uh, really um, and he is obviously disturbed um, there's many tropes in this movie you know has the um, has a slasher trope obviously um, has the POV of the killer and also uh, killers inside the house because of the phone call and they're tracing the phone calls and then how the person finds out that who uh, is talking to them is inside the house and um, you know and it, though that kind of trope wasn't really implemented a whole lot a couple years later after this film um, uh, a stranger called uh, you know was came out and was made it was made it came out and um um, I think this film had an influence on that in terms of the killers inside the house kind of thing that they took uh, from that urban legend that was that's famous. But there have been uh, you know famous examples like an Italian film, Dario, Dario Argento film, I believe, that uh, had such a thing in it where um, a 
killer t uh, called a victim and you know before they attacked them they you know called them and then hung up and um not exactly that uh um, they were in the house per se but the whole thing of the killer calling the person before they went to kill them uh, had happened before um and to take a setting uh, to take a plot like that and put it have it, uh, the backdrop be christmas you know a happy time of year is quite interesting you know people think of christmas time as a happy stuff and families getting together and sort of in a way like um you know thanksgiving here in the united states but uh, with christmas you know it's uh, it's families getting together eating a lot and um <clears throat> talking and just ha having a good time really and exchanging presents and um giving presents and also about you know the birth of jesus christ hence the name christmas because christ is in christmas and i'm sure that is completely obvious to everybody but you know it's like to have a film like this um you know is quite something and it's not exactly the first horror christmas film i believe there was another one i can't recall exactly what the name is off the top of my head but the thing is i mentioned all those tropes earlier because a lot of people say it's the first <clears throat> this it's first that and it isn't it's really the first movie that put all those things together in one movie and um honestly uh there isn't a whole lot of holiday themed horror films yeah there's halloween yeah there's my bloody valentine but you know until this movie that's really popularized putting christmas a real supposed to be kind of pure happy time of year and now there's a killer going around with killing sorority girls um uh, if the film is really incredible honestly especially when you think of the director who would, who would later go on to make a christmas story one of the most beloved christmas films of all time made this a pretty much a decade earlier and it's kind of like wow because this movie came out to the uh, 1974, and like a week before in Canada, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out. So, um, but you know, uh, it has a legacy. It has its influence in the genre. It is quite a film. It deserves the praise it's gotten, and. Um, the ending is quite interesting. If you've never seen the movie, you are in for something special because um, I don't want to say too much because if I mean if you've seen it, you already know. But if you haven't seen it, um, watch it. It's definitely good. It's great acting, great writing, directing, and it's just a very good film. Um, John Saxon plays a cop, which is interesting. He seems to be playing a, a authority figure quite a bit uh, at least in this one's most famous roles uh and Nightmare on elm street also comes to mind um played a police officer in that film also um at least pertaining to horror at least um but it is a quite an interesting film it's very good it's very well done so if you've never seen it and you're a horror fan watch it if you want to watch something different for christmas and you're just kind of like tired of watching the same old stuff you watch every year i mean there's nothing wrong with like watching home alone or uh christmas story or it's a wonderful life or any of those typical films i mean i know there's die hard but i mean i've always said with die hard you could always take that plot and really put it anywhere else in the year it work the only thing is it has references to Christmas because it's a Christmas party and that kind of thing. But, you know, but you could also say Lethal Weapon is also a Christmas film because it takes place during Christmas time also. And they have a Christmas dinner and Trading Place is also is around Christmas time. 
Gremlins, Batman Returns, you know, there's all these other films, but um, honestly, you know, I think you could argue with all those films. They would still work in many ways. Oh, I guess with Batman Returns, it does kind of make sense with the penguin and everything with snow. So maybe that's an exception to all that around that time of year. No, I guess it could be a month, a month later or so with the snow still around, but I think you get what I mean, you know, with Die Hard, Lethal Weapon, and all that, all the plots there would all work different times of year, celebrating another holiday like the 4th of July or something. But with Black Christmas, I don't think it could work. I think if you put this in any other kind of holiday, I mean, it could work, but with the conditions of everything going on and the, how things are going, because the first girl who is killed, you know, her father is there to pick her up, to take her home, to spend Christmas, and uh, she doesn't show up, and that's completely not like her, so because of that, there's this huge deal of this girl being missing, and then all these other things happen, and they're trying to figure out what's going on, and with all that going on, it's like, it's, it's, it helps it stand out, and I think if it was on any other time, if it took place any time of year, not Christmas, I don't think this film would work as well. I really don't. It's not like Die Hard, you could say it. The 4th of July or just in the middle of spring or the summer, anywhere else at any time of year. You know, this works because it takes place during Christmas. It takes this happy holiday season and it turns it upside down and people are getting killed this time of year and it's not good. And um, Or, you know, for the characters, it's not good. Uh, and that's what makes it special. That's what really makes it stand out. And same with Halloween. Wouldn't really work as well if it wasn't around Halloween time. Um, Friday the 13th isn't really a holiday, honestly. It's just a day that people... Like, it's a it's bad luck. That bad luck happens on that day. There's 13 like a, is not a good number. Superstitious people. You know, that's what they say. That's what they know. I'm not superstitious myself, but, you know, there are people who are, you know, who are like that. But it's not really a holiday. Uh, nowadays, if you're a fan of that franchise, it's a day where you just watch all the movies or you marathon as many of the films as you can or you watch your favorite movie in that series. That's really what that amounts to, honestly. Um, there really hasn't been a film that takes place during, like, Thanksgiving, though Eli Roth is supposed to be making one. And he made a fake trailer, which was amongst many in the Grindhouse uh, film, where uh, this and this Blu-ray, you can watch back-to-back, -back, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> oh, Planet Terror, and then you can watch uh, Death Proof, and there's other trailers that came out of this film that became movies like Machete and uh, Hobo with a Shotgun. So that will be like the third film to come from this. And uh, I hope it comes out soon. Uh, it's been in the works for quite a long time. And uh, I think a Thanksgiving horror film is something that is missing. Uh, we have this, which is the best Christmas horror film, in my opinion. There is Silent Night, Deadly Night. There's other horror films taking place during Christmas, but this is the best. I, you can have your own opinion. That's fine. This is the best to me. I love it. I love to watch it as often as I can, usually this time of year. Uh, but, yeah, Die Hard isn't one I watch every Christmas. I know many people will say... It's the best Christmas movie, but you know, uh, Home Alone is my favorite still. But my favorite alternative Christmas film has to be has to be Black Christmas. I was upside down. Apologize for that, but again, if this film was set any other time of year, I don't think it would work. It would not have worked, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, the premise and everything would still be good, but. Uh, with the Christmas element being there, it's it would really be lacking, in my opinion. And uh, 
with that said, um, I really, uh, yeah, that's really it. I mean, Die Hard can take place any time of year, still work. Um, you know, his wife could get a promotion, and there you go. So the reason going out there, or it's big news that that company is doing well and has this big sale, so there's a celebration. Black Christmas, though, said any other time of year, any other holiday, maybe it would work, but, you know, the holiday, with the holiday season that Christmas has, with all the anticipation and build-up, it would not work any other holiday. It really would not. Um, but, uh, that's just me. That's just what I think. That's, I love this film. Uh, again, if you're a horror film fan and you haven't watched it, watch it. If you're a movie fan in general, I say watch it. Um, it's a good movie. I enjoy it. Um, and with that said, I hope you all have a good day and a good week. And until next time, keep having a good one. Um, bye.